Welcome back to MacBook Lessons, a lesson a day made easy for you on Facebook. Today we're going to continue our lessons on iBooks Author, and we're going to go ahead and open up the iBooks Author we've been working on. And today we're going to talk about the toolbar up here. The toolbar is a fun place because you get to customize it to the way you want it to be laid out. And you can change your layout every time you work on a new book and that layout will stay on that book and you can add things to the toolbar up here and you can take things away and you can actually move them around. So the first thing we've already talked about is add pages right here. Right next to that is the view and you'll notice there are a bunch of different things that you can add to your view like the styles drawer, you can add your rulers, you can actually um, Show your glossary right here. So if you wanted to add a term real quickly, we could add it. You can come over here to show invisibles if you want to know where your paragraph buttons um, additions are and that kind of stuff. And then we can come up here and hide them as well. And I'm going to go ahead and hide all these things that we just opened. You have the orientation button right here, and we haven't really talked too much about orientation except for when we showed the books that we could choose from. Some of them were landscape and some of them were um, portrait and landscape. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Some of them are portrait and some of them are portrait and landscape. So when you're in a book in the portrait mode, it's very simple. You'll notice there's not a whole lot of fancy layout to it it seems very structured. However, when you're in the landscape mode, it seems more um, creative and artistic to me. And maybe that's just my own interpretation, but I really feel like there's a difference between landscape and portrait. And you can build the book one way and then go back and build it the other you can build it I'm sorry you can build it in portrait mode and then go back and adjust in landscape mode it'll still have all of your items in landscape mode but you can adjust it to the way you like so for instance right now I see the introduction at the top with the title and the verbiage over here in this mode whereas when I'm in this I don't see that verbiage I see the introduction and title it's very just very simple and I can adjust this to be the way I want and I can bring that verbiage down on this page and that kind of stuff but it's uh, it's very different in two different modes and some people really like that one mode where it just does it in portrait because it simplifies the way you make your book if you're making it with students you might consider talking to them about that and consider um, encouraging them to do the portrait mode first just to test it out before they try the portrait and landscape that way they get comfortable with the layout and then they can um, play with it when they move to the next book they make. Over here we have text box where we can add a text box to any page. We can add shapes just like in any of the other programs. Circles. We can adjust the colors on the circles and all that. We can, um, oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. We can add tables to our pages and we can adjust those tables over here in the inspector. This is the inspector that's just shown up and it'll take us to our tables menu in the inspector and you can change how many um, rows and columns in the background and all that right here in the inspector. I'm going to close that back up. If we want to open it back up we just hit the eye right there. We have charts and you can use the charts just like you would use in Excel or in um, numbers you would use those charts in that same manner. And then the last thing in this little section is widgets. And widgets we're going to actually do in its own um, training because widgets has a lot of fun stuff in it that we can add. Over here you have preview and publish. If I want to preview this, I can hook up my iPad to my computer through the USB. And when I do, it will, I'll press this button and it'll actually show my device right here in the preview window. And I can click on it and it'll publish it right to the iBooks section on, in, on your iBooks on the iPad. 
We will show more of that later when we go over the preview and publish chapters. The publish will actually allow us to push it to the iBookstore. You can push it as a paid book or a free book, and that's your decision. We have the inspector over here, which again has all the different menus for all the different sections. For instance, text, we can come in and adjust the text. We can adjust the um, size of things. If I wanted to adjust the size of this circle, we can do that right here. There's all different kinds of things. We can make hyperlinks out of a word. If we want to make a word take you to a web page or whatever, you can do that right there. So that's basically the inspector. We have the media. This will actually allow us to go to our iPhotos and open up and pull in videos and photos and audio from our computer. We have this color menu right here which will allow us to change colors of things. So if I wanted to choose this color, I could add it down here to my swatch. And then anytime I wanted to change the color of an item, I could actually change it over here. So that's what the colors does. And then last, there's the fonts button right here. So I can actually change the fonts I'm using, the size, the typeface, and the different fonts. Now, like all the other programs on the MacBook, if you double click on or right click on your, sorry, if you right click on your toolbar, you actually get this customized toolbar. And when you customize the toolbar, you can, that's when you can actually move things around and change it. Now, my favorite is the Instant Alpha, which will actually take backgrounds out of pictures and stuff. I love to have that in my toolbar always. But you can add other things like columns, which can become important, um, grouping items and that kind of stuff. You can add that up there for, you know, if you're doing something and you're repeatedly using that item, you'll want to customize your toolbar to make it perfect for what you're doing. And that's basically it. Once you add something, you just drag it up there. If um, And I actually didn't show you. If I want to get rid of something, I can actually just drag it back off, and it'll come off. So I have to be in the menu, though, in order to drag it off. I can't drag it off if I'm out of this menu. It will not let me. So that is basically the toolbar. I hope that that inspired you to learn another program in this um, on the MacBook because this toolbar feature is actually available in Pages, in Numbers, in Keynote, um, in a lot of the other programs that you may use on the MacBook, iMovie, any of the iWorks, i and um, iLife. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time.